All right, it is sci-fi fantasy and weird fiction exploration time with War for the Oaks by Emma Bull. All right, here we go. There we go. And this one is actually urban fantasy. And I added it to the sci-fi fantasy word list after reading it because I'm like, it, it, it should be included. <laughs> why I added it. And it's actually the first title I added and I'm now realizing that the list is going to be a little more dynamic as opposed to fixed than I thought. <laughs> let's, let's see how it goes. Now this one's from 1987 and it's really, for me, I came across it, I was just, I don't know what I was looking at. I think I might have been looking through the vaginal fantasy titles or the forums or something like that and it got referred to as sort of like one of the big influential books in urban fantasy because we read a lot of urban fantasy uh, there. So it was kind of cool to sort of read this one, which is really sort of like a pioneering title in the urban fantasy uh, land. If you're not familiar with urban fantasy, it's just simply city set. Uh, you know, so there's the urban part and there is a fantasy element to it. So there's like magic or creatures or, you know, werewolves, vampires, those like it depends on the particular book, but it has fantastical elements, but it is current day or at least when this one's 80 said, so <laughs> it's current day when it was written. Um, I, don't, I don't think it has to be current day, but you can only go so far back before urban goes out the window. <laughs> Is that true? What's steampunk? That's something different. Anyway, off topic. Back to the topic. War for the Oaks. So this one actually follows a girl, who, a woman who is a guitarist and or lead singer and lead singer of a band and she sort of gets stumbled into a bit of a fantastical world not literal the fantastical world kind of comes to her and in a roundabout way asks her for help um in their fantastical problems <laughs> i don't want to get into the specifics of the, the urban fantasy elements because it's a great um the, how they dole it out is very great for us urban fantasy people that read a lot of stuff now. Like you'll you'll notice stuff, but at the time, I bet people would have no idea that it is that there are fantastical elements till you're pretty and in, pretty into the book itself. So, but it's it's funny because most of it sort of centers on not most of it, but a lot of it is sort of more about her being in a band and that and like is that going well? Is that not going well? And performing and with her friends and just sort of like that sort of living on her own. Like for me, the things that I would have, I this is the first time I've read it, but I would have loved to have read it at the time because you're talking about someone who's, uh, you know, living on their own and doing their own thing and being in the city and being part of band. Like it's really, it's sort of that sort of not gla glamorous, not glamorous thing because it's like her apartment's crap, you know, like and tiny and like, <laughs> like, but it's also not horrible. I think a lot of city stuff gets viewed as, as like crime ridden and just horrible. And it's just not, true they're not always the truth so it was nice to see something that felt to me a little more normal as someone who lives in the city um like just to be like yeah these are things that i recognize and uh as reality plus there's all these awesome fantastical elements as well one of the weird things about this one too is i think if it was written now i think it would be really just just slam dunked into the romance category and although there are relationships in this i don't think that it's a romance per se um although there are romance there are relationships i don't even like they're not even all romantic even though the relationships which was a real for me a real eye-opener because i realized a lot of the urban fantasy i read has the same kinds of romantic elements and this one it was like it felt way more realistic in its depiction. So the genre has sort of morphed, uh, I think, into some some of the similar uh, trends. And I think, oh, there could be room to sort of shake this up. So that's, you know, it was one of those weird things that you see later when you look back at something and you see it from a current day perspective. So that was really interesting. I was going to, I was going to, I usually note if there's anything that didn't work for me. And I'm like, actually not thinking of anything that didn't work for me if there was anything I didn't like about it and I don't think that's the case I think the only thing is because I read so much that's sort of like this now there's some things that were familiar to me earlier than they were stated um but I don't think that there was anything that I didn't like. I did, I wasn't, there was a lot of descriptions of the performances of her band or 
the um, even the rehearsals of the band. And that wasn't like there were some things that I liked about it. I definitely recognized the songs that they were covering. Um, and so there's a nostalgic element to that. Uh, but some other stuff, the sort of newer stuff, I have a hard time reading songs in books or poetry in books or, or poems. I just I just it breaks me out of it. And so I feel like I should know the rhythm it should be or some are hearing it or feeling it differently than I am. So sometimes that can break me out of it. And the performances and descriptions, I thought, like for me, I get what they were going with and I, and it's supposed to be very powerful, but I, I felt like it was, there was a lot of them and maybe I quite didn't quite need so many, but, um, but it's very important to the story. So, you know, what can you say? <laughs> what can you say? Um, but yeah, it didn't work for me. No, I actually thought this was great. It was also really, gosh, it was really nice to read something in this kind of world that was a standalone novel. Again, now everything is like the never ending series, especially some of the urban fantasy ones, especially some of the ones that I love. I just feel like they're never, they're never going to end. There's just one more. They also, they more, they almost feel like they follow a crime series procedural thing you know whereas they're solving something each case whereas this one was more about finding out you know about another the fantasy elements <laughs> i gotta get to the spoiler zone so i can tell people what i'm talking about here but you know it's a little more discovery and it was a little i don't know there was a little it was a little more epic uh which is amazing to get in one volume so I really, or one novel, I really did appreciate that. And I would actually recommend it, especially since it's one book. Like, honestly, and especially if you have any kind of nostalgia for the 80s and you like the music of the 80s, there is something particularly wonderful about that. If you're not familiar with it, that, you know, it's not, it's probably not going to hit you as much as it hit me. And um, I think all the chapter titles are actually song titles. And, and just there's that added element that was really great. Um, now, one of the questions I tend to ask myself is what I read more from this author. I'm trying to be very author focused with this exploration, but this author hasn't actually written that much else. She, she does have a um, Starting in 2011, there's this shadow unit uh, sort of series of novellas written with a bunch of other writers, including Elizabeth Bear and Amanda Downram and Sarah Monette. And there's certain, there are Kindles, Kindle books, I think. And uh, so you buy one and you get like three or four uh, books set in the same series. And I think they're urban fantasy, but they're also crime. So crime is not, it's not really my so I don't know if I'll end up doing that. Did I enjoy the writing? Yes. I enjoyed the story very much. I enjoyed the characters, their interactions. There was something really unique about this one. And I liked how it was a little a little more realistic uh, and in its depiction of the city, uh, both from a positive and negative uh, elements, I think. And um, there was just something really, really special about this one. So I really enjoyed it. And I would definitely recommend it to anyone who... Who likes urban fantasy and sort of see the roots of if you're not from if you don't have that 80s connection though the music stuff which is very important uh it might not resonate as much so yeah in terms of one of the questions i also ask is is it essential i do think that um i think for this for urban fantasy it definitely is it definitely holds a place that's why i put it on this list is this sort of like this sort of ricocheted you know other titles and and I and created, I don't know if it's the only book I'll have, I'd have to look more into that, um, you know, for other early urban fantasy titles, because now it really, it, it made me realize how much now there kind of is a formula, because every time I encountered something that was different in this, I was like, oh, I was expecting it to go this way, or oh, I was expecting this kind of dynamic, or I was expecting this kind of approach, or this level of emotion. And, um, and, and it was different. And that kind of made me go, oh, that all the other books I read are like, very similar. It's like, there is, there is a different approach. And this, and that was really cool. That might have been the coolest thing about the whole experiment. Okay, before we go into the spoilers, I'm going to share what I'm going to talk about next. And I'm like, crap, what is it? Herland, Herland will be the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is a utopic novel written in 1915 a feminist utopia is like a feminist utopic novel it was, it was quite amazing and actually it's a good tie-in with this one because this is female author female protagonist urban fantasy goodness so next on to the spoiler zone for those of us who have read it or for those of us who do not care about spoilers i gotta say like once i 
once I keyed in that this is um, about the Fae and fairy and stuff, I was like, oh, like all these things sort of fell into place and I sort of recognized different things and what you can and can't do. And I didn't even realize how many books I had read that were about fairy type stuff, like the and like all of the things about not saying thank you or not accepting a bargain, you know, and all like all these things. I'm like, I know that, I know that. Oh, she's gonna get into trouble here. Da 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 da. da. So that was kind of funny. <laughs> like, but I thought they really brought it out in a great way. I think it could have gone in different directions until they revealed that it was fairy. Like I think they could have it could have gone in different directions, whether it was some other like some supernatural type thing or a ghost or a, I, who knows. Um, I did find it a little weird that sort of the war, like the 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 battles, I found it like it it felt like you know they were building up to that a lot, but then when they happened, they felt like there was one early, and I was like, what's going on? How can this happen so early? So the the progression of time was a little bit confusing. I thought they were very gutsy with what they did with the characters having relationships that didn't work out and again that made me think wow a lot of the urban fantasy I read is just is is romance and it's gonna go here 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 and here what they did in this one was very different um and I you know it feels brave to but that feels strange because this didn't have the you know the the examples that we have now but I, I really really appreciated it that it felt like the relationships were ro realistic but that didn't mean there wasn't any romance or any emotion actually emotion was really uh important and i thought she was such a strong character and such a real character and true to herself which was really nice to see um and i really appreciated that so if you've read war of the oaks i'd love to hear your take on it especially if you are reading it now for the first time or if you read it in the 80s or earlier and uh you know have sort of seen the progression of the urban fantasy genre i think that's that would be really wild to have had that experience for me i'm looking back because i've read a lot of like the mercy thompson series kate daniels um and there's a couple other like mortal instruments even you know like where it's that's not very well neither is kate daniels anyway <laughs> I'm like, I've read tons of stuff with very stuff in it. Oh, a lot of stuff I didn't finish. But anyway, getting tang tangenting here. But uh, yeah, if you, if you, what, like, yeah, I, and actually I'd love to hear just people's favorite urban fantasy novels. I should put that before the spoiler zone. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. War of the Oaks. It was a great read. I'm really, really happy that I found it, that I read it, and that I decided to add it to the list because, hey, it's my list. I can do whatever I want with it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for watching.